Okay, so I've turned on the recording for today's, today's lecture. Welcome, everyone. Uh, let's just quickly review uh, where we were, uh, where we paused last week. I will uh, share the notes. And uh, let's see. Okay, so uh, those of you are online, uh, you would have downloaded the lecture notes, the PDF. Uh, so please follow along with uh, us. And those who are in class, you have the printed version of the notes. So please follow along. So we gave a little introduction last week, uh, just uh, introducing the subject of faith. And uh, we'll quickly review what we did, and then we will go forward. So what we said last week is, you know, from the introduction that um, our Christian walk is not a passive life where you just sit and wait for God to drop things on you, right? It's not a passive thing, but it's an active thing. We have to reach out and take what God has made available to us, right? We have to reach out. That's why we said in Luke, um, you know, Luke 12, 32, Jesus said, it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And yet at the same time, in Matthew 11, 12, he said, we have to press in you know, the wild and take it by force. So one side, God is very happy to give it to you. On the other side, he's saying, you have to take it by force, with violence. You know? So both are there. Both are an important part. And so the taking it by force is where faith comes in to take hold of what is ours in the kingdom. And so we introduced the course and then we uh, began with the definition of what faith is. And this quickly reviewing, uh, based on Hebrews 11.1, 1, we said faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. Right? So faith is the substance of things hoped for. So first of all, we said, therefore, we must hope for things. Right? There is nothing wrong in hoping or desiring for things. Now, you must desire to, for example, if God has called you to be a pastor, you, know, you must desire to have a church. You must desire to impact the lives of people. You must desire to accomplish great things. Right? You must desire, if you're sick, you must desire to be healed. Right? So faith is the substance of things hoped for. You must have that hope or that desire for things. And faith is the substance. It gives substance. We also said it means it's the foundation, and or, or it also mean, it means it is the title deed. You know, it's the title deed of things you hope for it's a title deed it's the proof of ownership so your faith is the proof of ownership of things you're hoping for right that means it's your proof saying that i have it it's mine yeah? so somebody says how do you how do you know you have it my faith is proof of ownership and i remember the story uh, that Yonggi Cho had written in one of his books. Now, Yonggi Cho, this was back in the 1960s, a long time ago. Uh, uh, at that time, uh, you know, he was a young man in Korea, and uh, there was the Korean War, and so the country had gone through a lot of, lot, lot of difficulties. But God had raised him up. He had been saved, and God raised him up. And if you know the story of Yonggi Cho, God used him to build the largest church in the history, uh, in Christian history, more than 800,000 people uh, in, in that church. And, but anyway, this was in the very beginning of his ministry. 
he, he shares this little story about uh, when he started in the ministry, uh, he, had, he was living in one room, but in that room, he had nothing. There's no chair, no desk, nothing. So he prayed. He said, God, I want a desk, I want a chair, and I want a cycle. I want three things. And so he had nothing. He was just you know, in a bare room. He was starting. So he prayed, I want a desk, I want a chair, and I want a cycle. And God was teaching him about faith. Right? So he started praying. And then he learned that faith is the title deed. It's the ownership. It's a proof of ownership. That means you have it even though you cannot see it. Right? So when he would tell his friends, come, come, come and see. I have a desk, chair, and cycle. They'll come to his room. He'll open the door. It's empty. But he said, I have a desk. I have a chair. I have a cycle. But you can't see it. You look all around in the room. There's no desk, no chair, no cycle. But he says, I have a desk. I have a chair. I have a cycle. Where is it? My faith. By faith, I have received it. So by faith, I have already received it from God. But it's not in the room. It's not physically there. You can't see it physically. But he said, come see, come in my room, see. I have a desk, I have a chair, I have a cycle. Nothing there in the room. But he said, I have a desk, I have a chair, I have a so people thought, he's gone. <laughs> but what he was expressing was his faith. Yeah, Because faith is the title deed. It's the proof of ownership of things hoped for. He's desiring for that. Right? But you can't see it yet. You can't see it in the natural. But he said, I have a desk, I have a chair, and I have a cycle. Yes, pray. Believed God. By faith, I have received. And you know, and sure enough, shortly after that, I forget uh, how, you know, what was the time period, but very soon, uh, somebody was, uh, you know, uh, leaving the country and they were getting rid of their things. And so they came, they gave him a desk, a chair, and a cycle. <laughs> and he received exactly what he prayed for. Right? So faith is the proof of ownership. That means you know it's yours even before it actually comes in the natural. So faith is the substance of things hoped for. So he desired, he wanted, he desired, he hoped for a desk, a chair, and a cycle. He, he had faith in God. He believed he had received it, even though he couldn't see it. But that was his proof of ownership. And then eventually it came into reality in the natural realm. Okay, So faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. So even though our natural senses cannot feel it, it's not there, but you have the conviction of the reality. You have the conviction, it is true. You know? For example, even when you're believing God for healing, right? Uh, you may not feel healed, but you believe the word of God, that by the stripes of Jesus, you have been healed. Right? You believe you've been healed. You with me so far? Okay? All right. So, we saw Hebrews 11.1. 1. I'm just quickly reviewing that. Okay? Then, our faith connects us to God. So, when you want to, you know, connect with God. So, Francis, are you using your phone to look at the Bible or? Oh, meaning. Okay. Don't use your phone for other things, okay? Uh, it's not right. So faith connects us to God. Right? So if we want God is spirit, we are in this realm. 
If we want to connect with God, we have to connect by faith. So we have to connect by faith. Uh, faith is required to please God. So if you want to please God, uh, you've got to have faith. Uh, our faith is in the person of Jesus Christ. We said this, that Jesus is the author and finisher of, 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 of our faith. Um, so it's not in some mechanical thing or, you know, it's in the person of Jesus Christ. Uh, then we said that faith is based on a relationship. You know, uh, Abraham was called a friend of God. Abraham is a father of faith. And what is, what's he referred to as? He's referred to as the friend of God. So faith is based on our personal relationship with God. And as we grow in our relationship with God, we will also be able to grow and increase in our faith. We also said last week, faith is of the heart. That means with a heart, man believes. So it's not a mind thing, it's a heart thing. So sometimes in your mind, you may have questions. In your mind, there may be doubts. In your mind, there may be you know, some things that you're not sure of, but you can still have faith in your heart. And that's where the battle many times is. You know, if you're believing God for a promise, you believe in your heart, God is true, God is faithful, God will keep his word. But sometimes you will face questions in your mind or things around you will be going against the promise of God. It will be going against, it will be going opposite to the word of God. So your mind will, you know, will feel, oh, what is happening? You know, it's very opposite. But in your heart, you say, no, God is true. His word is true. I believe it. So faith is of the heart, even though in the mind there may be questions. Your mind may be struck, you know, facing and seeing these things that are happening around us. And so there may be questions. And it's okay, right? Don't confuse the questions in your mind with your heart. Your heart can believe even when there are questions in your mind. Okay? So faith is of the heart and we walk by faith, not by sight. And uh, we said that God calls us to live by faith. That means everything you do in life, do it by faith. Everything. You know, uh, you're going to be here for one year, two years, three years, you'll study with us, then you're going to graduate, then you're going to start your ministry, you're going to do something. Everything you do, you have to do it by faith. You believe God. God will bless me. God will help me. God will, you know, work through my life. You may pray for people. Whatever you do, you have to do it by faith. We live by faith. That means everything you are doing in life, you have to do it by faith in God. Right? So our, our life is a life of faith. And now we we stopped, I think, somewhere here that our faith is conceived and nurtured by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of That's why we must always go to the word of God. And always. Your faith is based on the word of God, the scriptures. What did God say? You know, it's based on the promise. So you go back to the promise and read it, meditate in it, be established in the promise of God, because faith is birthed by the word of God, and faith is nurtured and made strong by the word of God. Right? So we have to constantly go back, go back, and, and you, know, you, you, you establish yourself on the word of God, on the promise of God, because faith is conceived and it's nurtured by the word of Okay. So, now, faith in the Word is faith in God. So when you believe the Word, you are believing God. Or when you believe God's Word, you're believing God. So God, God celebrates that when He sees you and me. 
wow, this person really believes my word. He's actually, he or she is actually believing me. You know? So you, when you have faith in the word of God, you're actually having faith in God. So that's important, right? We talked about this last week. And uh, faith is like a muscle. It grows as it is exercised. So faith is like a muscle. You have to keep using it, keep using it. And as you keep using your faith, as you keep exercising your faith, it's going to grow. It's going to become stronger. And as your faith is stronger, you can do bigger things, greater things for the kingdom of God. All right. Let's start. Now, so we covered till that last week. So all this was just a quick review. So let's begin now. We're going to look at a few more things about faith. Uh, I want us to understand that there are several factors that influence our faith. Right? So we know faith is based on the word, but if we want to exercise faith in God, uh, there are other things that are involved. So for example, you know, if you're doing exercise, you're building your muscle, very good. But uh, you have to be in good health. If you're sick, then you're laying down, you can't use your muscle, right? You can't exercise. So your, your whole body has to be in good health if you're going to be doing something. So it's like that, where um, for faith to work, there are other things involved. What are those other things? In Galatians chapter 5 and verse 6, could somebody read that for us? Galatians 5 verse 6. Go ahead, just read it out. We can read it from the notes. Galatians are from the screen. Galatians 5 verse 6. Those of you with us online, uh, feel free. If you have any questions, just type it on the chat. And you know I will come and look at the chat from time to time. And I will be, we will be happy to answer your questions. All right? For those of you online, just feel free to type your questions or comments in the chat as we progress. And I will look at it from time to time. All right. Galatians 5, 6. Somebody please read it. Hmm. Mm. So Galatians 5, 6, the last part of that verse, it says, what matters is faith working through love. Faith works through love. So what must, what must be there for faith to work? There has to be love. The love of God. You have to be walking in the love of God. So example, suppose... There's only example. Suppose Nikhil, right? So Nikhil comes uh, for prayer. Pastor, pray, pray for me. Or whoever, he may come to you for prayer. Please pray for me. Okay, you want to pray for him. You want to uh, exercise your faith for him or with him, right? But in order to exercise faith with him or for him, what must you have? Because faith works through love. Suppose you just fought with Nickel, angry. Huh? You're now not talking to him. Huh? No, not in good terms. Can you exercise faith? Not possible. Why? Because faith works through love. If you don't have love, if you don't have compassion, it's difficult for faith to work. Understanding. So when we want to pray for somebody, we have to move in the love of God. Because faith works through love. So it's important. Right? So faith is based on the word of God. That's important. Faith comes from the word of God. Important. But for faith to work, it has there has to be love. Faith works through love. So I have to guard my heart. Each one of us, we have to guard our heart. That there is no hatred in our heart towards people and there is no anger there is no hatred no bitterness towards people because anger hatred bitterness towards people can prevent faith from working so first suppose example right? suppose i am angry with nickel before i can pray for him first i have to get that out god i'm sorry uh remove this 
hatred or anger or whatever towards him. Oh God, take it out of my heart. Give, fill it with, fill my heart with love for nickel. So now there is love in my heart. Then faith can work because faith works through understanding. Right? It's very important. And if you look at Second Peter, Second Peter chapter one, verses uh, five through eight, Peter in that passage is telling us. To faith, to the faith we have in God, we have to add many other things. So I want you to count how many other things to add to faith. Just count in those verses. He says, to your faith, add, add to your faith, let's count it, virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness love so how many seven so to faith you keep adding these things he mentioned seven things that means faith needs this kind of an environment it needs to be surrounded by these things the seven other ingredients for it to thrive, for it to uh, grow and be nurtured and become strong. Right? So add to your faith seven things he mentions. You know, virtue, um, knowledge, self-control, endurance, godliness, brotherly kindness, love. Right? So, why am I emphasizing this? Because sometimes when we talk about faith and uh, we are focusing in this whole course, uh, we are focusing on this one topic of faith. But remember, other things are important around it. Right? For faith to work, there has to be love. For faith to be in a good condition, there has to be these other things like virtue and knowledge and brotherly kindness and self-control and endurance. All those things are need to surround the faith that we have in our hearts for faith to be really effective. Okay, we're going to spend all, almost all our time talking about faith, but don't forget other things are also important around it. Okay, so you can. Uh, you know, you can keep this list in mind that faith needs these other things to uh, to also be uh, built up and encouraged. And in First Timothy chapter one and verse nineteen, what was that? Somebody's phone. Okay, sorry, there's some interruption here. Okay, in First Timothy chapter one, verse nineteen, Paul the apostle he mentions this that uh, we need faith. Uh, we need a good conscience for faith. That I means our conscience must be clear uh, for faith to work. So that's another aspect that we must keep in mind. Right. So let me just. Um, pause and see if anybody on the live, on, on the online class has any questions. All right. Okay. So I just I see a question here from Nina. Uh, when we say heart, is this used interchangeably with man's spirit? That's right. So Nina, Nina, the answer to your question is yes. Right. So Nina's question is: Does heart Mean spirits, okay. So, in the in the in the New Testament, it's almost synonymous. That means heart and spirit are used uh, in a synonymous way; they're interchangeable. But in the Old Testament, the heart is often used uh, inclusive of spirit and soul. Uh, uh, if you if you if you study the way the word heart is used in the Old Testament. It, it kind of inclusive spirit and soul. 
But in the New Testament, for some reason, you will find a demarcation between, between spirit and soul. And so the heart is used uh, in, in, in a very distinct manner. So to answer your question, in the New Testament, heart and spirit can be used interchangeably. In the Old Testament, you've got to keep in mind that sometimes the word heart refers to the inner person, include that is spirit and soul. Okay. All right. There's another question here from Krishna. If someone's hurt us emotionally, but we are still praying for them, does it affect our faith? Krishna. Krishna. Yes. Yeah, sorry, Krishna. Uh, I said Krishna. Thank you for correcting me. So Krishna has a question. If someone has hurt us emotionally and uh, we are still praying for them, does it affect our faith? You see, as long as we are able to love them. So people hurt us, of course. It causes us pain. Um, we may feel upset and all of that. But if we forgive, if we let go, we are able to walk in the love of God. Uh, and then we pray from that place of love and forgiveness, our faith will be effective. But if somebody has hurt us and we are angry, we are hateful, we are resentful, bitter towards them, then that negative emotion of hatred, unforgiveness, anger towards them is going to hinder our faith. Okay, so it's so important that we first forgive, uh, we first release the love of God, and then begin to extend our faith towards them. Okay? And, 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 and a classic passage is in Mark 11, 22, 23, 24, and 25. Mark 11, 22 to 25, because you know, Jesus says, have faith in God. You can move the mountain, verse 23. You can pray and receive from God. And right after that, he tells us to forgive. Right? So it's all connected, uh, and it, it shows us the importance of uh, forgiving people. I hope uh, that answers your question, Krisha. Thank you. Good. Thank you for those questions. And any other questions? All right. Let's get back. Uh, any questions from those of you in class? Um, uh, any questions? OK. All right. Let's get back to the notes now. I will uh, go ahead and share my screen. So let's move forward. Another important aspect about faith. Faith causes the power of God and his word to be released. This is very important. Faith causes the power of God and his word to be released. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 11, notice the Apostle Paul is praying for these believers. He says, I'll be praying for you. That a God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness. And the work of faith with power. He's saying we are praying for you. So we just look at the last part of that verse. That God would fulfill the work of faith with Power. To fulfill means to complete. That God would complete your work of faith. That means when you step out and do something in faith. Okay, your work of faith. You are doing something. You're acting your faith. You're working your faith. You're, you're, you're putting your faith to work. What will happen? God will fulfill your work of faith. With power. But if you don't work your faith, his power is not going to be released. So a good example, which uh, we mentioned last time, is that it, you know faith can be imagined like a switch. Like a switch, right? So there's power coming in those wires from the electricity board comes in all the way and there's a switch but the switch is off the power is stopped there it's not flowing through but when you put it on power flows 
So just as an example, right? Just an example. Faith is like a spiritual switch. Right? So when you work your faith, when you act your faith, when you do something with your faith, then God fulfills or he completes our work of faith with power. So his power goes into operation when we work our faith. Not when we sleep on our faith. <laughs> we work. We have to exercise our faith. Then his power goes into operation. So faith causes the power of God and his word to be released. You know, and there's some more scriptures on this. Uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 45, you know, when Mary... Uh, Mary, uh, the angel has come to Mary and said, you know, Mary, you're going to have a child by the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so it's a, it's a really shocking word. And, uh, and, and then uh, in that context, this is what is spoken to Mary. Uh, Elizabeth speaks this by the Spirit. She says, blessed is she who believed. For there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the law. See, God has told you something. When you believe that, then you will see a fulfillment. So God has spoken. We believe it. Then there is a fulfillment of that word. So that's what Elizabeth is saying. Blessed are you who believed, because there will be a fulfillment of those things which were spoken to you by the Lord. Right? So faith is what causes that word, you know, for God's power to be released, to, uh, to, for that word to be fulfilled. One more scripture on that, Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 2, it says, For indeed... The gospel was preached to us as well as to them, referring to the Old Testament people, people of Israel. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. So think about this. The word of God is full of the power of God. Correct. His word is alive and powerful. So God's word is powerful. There's nothing wrong with them. You know, nothing, God's word is not empty. God is watching over his word to fulfill it. But it's telling us in Hebrews 4 verse 2 that the word did not benefit them. It didn't do anything. So can you imagine God is sending his word and his word is not accomplishing anything in them. He's referring to this, the Old Testament people, the people of Israel at that time. It didn't do them any good. The word was given to them. It didn't profit them. Why? It was not because there was a problem in the word. The word was pure. The word was the word of God. It was holy. It was full of power. What went wrong? It says... It was not mixed with faith. That's the problem. The word came. They didn't mix it with faith. They didn't mix it with faith. So what happened? It did not benefit. They heard the word. God gave them the promise. But still it didn't benefit didn't benefit. So if you want to put it in a, in, a, in a positive way, when we hear the word and we mix faith with it, we have faith in the word, then faith in the word causes the power of God to flow into our lives. Right? So you hear the word of God, and you believe that word, God, I believe that what you have said. I believe it. Then the power of God will flow into your life. So example, example. 
Suppose, as a believer, I'm a believer in Jesus, I believe God, but suppose right now in my life, example, things are very difficult. I'm struggling in my life. Uh, financially, I may be very difficult, whatever. Things are not going very well in life. Example, okay. Suppose that's my condition. Then I open my Bible. And in the Bible, I see, I just open my Bible. I say, okay, please let me read one psalm today. <laughs> I open my Bible. I'll read the first psalm. Okay, Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. He doesn't stand in the way of sinners. He doesn't sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. He will bring forth his fruit in its season. His leaf will not wither. And whatever he does will prosper. Hallelujah. Jump from my place. I start dancing. God, you said in your words, I will be like a tree. Planted by the rivers of water, I will bring forth my fruit in its season. My leaf will not wither. Whatever I do will prosper. Then I start dancing, shouting, hallelujah. Right now, things are bad in my life. Right now, you know, uh, things are very difficult. But God has given his word. And he says... If I fear the Lord, if I delight in this word, if I don't, you know, sit, do the wrong things, I will be like this. I will be like this. So what happens? I mix faith with that word. And I begin to say, I am like a tree planted by the rivers of water. I bring forth my fruit in it. Season, my leaf does not wither, whatever I do prospers. But he said, Hey, around you, things are very bad. Right now, things are very difficult, but it doesn't matter because God has given His word. And when you mix faith with that word, what will happen? That word will start working in your life. That word will start releasing God's power into your situations, into your circumstances. And things in your life will begin to change. It will begin to change. Things will happen. You say, how is it happening? It's because the power of God is working in your life situation. And the word of God will transform your life situation. And you will become like that tree. You will, you know be fruitful you will be evergreen and whatever you do will start prospering amen that's how it happened or imagine somebody reads the bible okay today i have to do devotion psalm one okay read read psalm one half halfway you sleep through the psalm you reach the last verse close the bible you go to you read the same psalm but it didn't profit. It didn't benefit. You read the same song. Maybe even highlighted yellow color, blue color, red color. <laughs> I don't know. But you didn't mix faith with that word. You read the same song. One person read the psalm, believed that it. Hallelujah, it is done. And you know, started rejoicing. I said, God, I believe that word. And that one word from God can transform your life if you mix faith with it. Another person read the same psalm, colored it different colors, closed the Bible, went. So I did my devotion. Yeah, you did your devotion, but you didn't believe the word. You didn't mix faith with the word. So what happened? The word that you read or the word that you heard didn't profit, didn't benefit. No, didn't benefit. Why? 
The problem was not with the word. It is from we didn't mix faith with the word. Are you understanding? Yeah. So in every this is so important. This is why faith is important. We must mix faith with the word of God, with what we hear. You know, and God's word will produce, it will work in our lives. Right? Now, I'll just tell you. Uh, to give you one story and then we'll go for a break. So I was uh, doing my engineering, I was studying, uh, this is uh, uh, for my masters. So I'd gone to the US to do my masters and uh, I had made a decision in my heart that I will not ask my parents for money after, after going there, right? I'm going to study on my own, I'm not going to ask my parents for money. And so, uh, and this was a long time ago. So, this was, so this was uh, 92, beginning of 92. I was, uh, I was in, in, in the university there. And uh, that semester, the semester fees was, I think, uh, around $6,000. I forget the exact amount, but something like that. $6,000 for that semester, one semester, every semester. So that, for that semester fees, for six thousand some dollars, I have to pay. I was also working as a student. You're allowed to work uh, on campus. I was also working, but that was only a stipend, meaning I would only get eight hundred dollars a month, which was enough for food and rent. I didn't have any, you know, more money to pay the fees. But I, I said, I will have faith in God. I will have faith in. So I started meditating in all these scriptures. Psalm 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. My God will supply all of your need according to his riches in glory. See, this is the Bible. This is the word of God. It's not too much scripture. It is the word of God. So God, you said you will supply all my according to your riches in glory so like this I took several scriptures also Matthew 17 20 said if you have faith in your heart like a mustard seed you speak to the mountain tell it to move it will move nothing will be impossible for you I said God I'm speaking to this mountain this tuition bill I declare so every day I will get up semester started Okay, they give you time to pay the fees. So semester started, I'm attending the classes, but no money to pay. I don't have money yet to pay the fees, right? And I'm uh, and every day I'm, I'm declaring the word of God, and I speak to my tuition bill. Tuition bill in the name of Jesus, you are paid in full. Because God said, you know, speak to the mountain, tell it to move, it'll move. So I said, I every I command this debt, this mountain of debt, to be cancelled. My tuition bill is paid in full in the name of Jesus. So speaking, speaking pretty. Now, semester is going on. Uh, I remember in class one day, the professor, he takes up the list. He says, Ashish, uh, your, your name is here. You still haven't paid this tuition fees in class. I said, uh, yes, sir, I'm, I'm, I'm working on it, which was true. I'm working by faith. You know? <laughs> I didn't tell him I'm working by faith. I just said, yes, sir, I'm working on it. Okay, bye. Because time is running out. You have to pay the fees. And if you don't pay the fees, then by the end of the semester, then whatever you've done in the semester is not counted. You know, you, you would have written all the exams, you've done all the assignments. But if you don't pay the fees, it's not counted. It's not regarded as though you've done those courses you know it's a waste so time was you know time was going i was i'd crossed with i think we'd crossed the middle of the semester so in the mornings when i would wake up my mind would be saying ashish you're a fool what is going on where is the money going to come from they will send you back to india you won't have a degree and it'll be very shameful you know my mind was full of those uh thoughts and you know, sometimes fearful thoughts or anxious thoughts. True. But in my heart, I said, no. God said in his word, 
my God will supply. So the louder these thoughts got in my mind, the louder and stronger my faith became. God, you will provide. I don't know how, but God will provide. I remember one day, so I was doing work for one of the professors. So I went to the I was working, doing my work in the lab. And suddenly the professor came. He said, Ashish, I have received a fax. Uh, I got a fax. That means, you know, uh, uh, electronic like transmission. Got a fax. He got a fax from the head of one depart another department for whom we were doing research. And he said, that person sent me this fax. On the fax, he mentioned that we have about $6,500 extra for this financial year, or this academic year, sorry. And he's asking my professor, the professor for whom I was doing research, if he would like to use that money anyway. So the professor came to me, showed me the facts. He said, I'm going to tell him we will use this money to pay your fees. Oh. I was, wow. You know, and then they gave me the check to pay my fees. I went, I was so proud. <laughs> but this was for me, it was like God fulfilled his word. He fulfilled his word. You know, how he did it, that was up to him. I didn't even know that you know all these things would happen. I didn't know. My part was to mix faith with the word, to believe the word of God and to stand firm in faith. God's part is fulfill the word. So when you have faith, he will fulfill your work of faith with power. Understand? Right? So that's how you and I must exercise our faith in God. And not only did I get money for that semester, he also said, from now on, we will cover all your future studies covered so not only that so everything was taken care of you know so just amazing how you know, god brought all of that together all right so let me just check quickly any questions here on the chat uh, before we go for a break all right okay all right so let's take a quick 10 minute break we'll go for a break we'll come back in 10 minutes See you all online. Uh, see all of you in 10 minutes. Just take a quick break and we'll be back. Thank you. God bless.